The Savage Axis is back. It's got a brand new barrel on it with the correct twist in it. So to catch you up to speed on this, this is the Savage Axis that my son won. First go around the barrel on it, did not have the correct twist rate in it, so we sent it back. I sent it back on April 12th, and we got it back with the new barrel on it. It came in on April, or May 23rd, so 41 days is what it took them to get it sent back to us. Um, some general specs on the rifle. This is a 22 inch. It does have the one and nine and a quarter in it now like it's supposed to. Um, it's got a box magazine. This 243 version does hold four rounds in there. It's got the two position safety on these Axis 2s. You don't get the third one so you can't lock the bolt down with it. It does have the Savage Accu trigger which I've left in the factory setting. If you buy shims, you can change this stock out, you know, for the for my son. It might be helpful if we go ahead, get some thinner ones, shorten that up a little bit for him since he is fairly small. But I have bought a handful of different rounds for this thing. Should be able to stabilize all of them. This is the version that we were shooting last time at 50 yards and they were tumbling. So now, all truth be told, I changed out that scope on there, the original 4 to 12 Bushnell. The eye relief on that thing was so short, when you zoomed it up to 12, you had to be just right up behind that thing. And uh, I was just stretching to get to it, so I went ahead and took it off. Put this VX5 on there that's supposed to be on my 300 short mag, but we'll go ahead and borrow this thing for the time being. I did also change out the mount on there too, put a one piece Picatinny rail on there. It's always better than two pieces. For the accuracy testing part of it, I figured we'll go ahead and shoot some 75 grain V Maxes. Now you got the Hornady Superformance and the Federal both shooting the 75 grain VMAX. Figure that'd be kind of interesting. We'll see which one of those turns out better. On the deer hunting side of things, got the same old barnses loaded up by Federal, the all copper. The 100 grain Winchester, just straight up power point, lead nose. Then we got some 90 grain ELDXs. And to finish it out, the Federal loaded with Burger 95 grain hybrid hunters. So we'll see how those deer rounds will do. For testing today, I'm probably just gonna shoot three groups maybe. Um, if when some of these rounds are fouling in, if it looks like they're continuing to get just a little bit smaller as we go, then maybe I'll shoot a fourth group or something. But since the magazine only holds four rounds, we'll probably just do four round groups on it. We'll just do, uh, three of these here with Federal to get this thing started off. I don't know, I might uh, either speed up the shooting because this could take a while or just kind of leave some of it out. But let's get some groups on some paper. Got a bit of wind going on here today, kind of gusting between about 10 and 15 mile an hour. Um, no real big deal. We'll just uh, see what we can get for some groups here. One thing I will say is that bolt lift, running the bolt sure is stiff on this thing. Hopefully once we get to shooting it'll kind of smooth up a bit. There's one group. 
group. Group number two. Well, there's three groups. Let's go down and take a look at them. There's our first group. There's our second group. Never mind that guy. That guy was part of the whole side in process. And there is the third group of the 85 grain TSX. All right. First group with the power points. Through that first one just a little bit, maybe that was just from the clean barrel and the Sullivan in it. The battery died in the middle of the first group of these, but overall it did pretty good, I think. That first one, especially after a clean bore, is always going to have a little bit of a flyer burning all the Sullivan out of the barrel but the other ones looked pretty good I'll shoot the second group here probably skip over filming the third group just to save some time in the video that way it's not you know an hour long Not a good looking group. In an effort to try to get this to group a little bit better here, I ran in the house, uh, grabbed my cheek riser off of my 308. It just got the bungee and Velcro on the bottom side of it. Just felt like I can't get comfortable quite behind the gun here. Get real steady. I was getting a lower jaw weld on here instead of up inside up by your teeth that was down on my lower jaw just wasn't steady hopefully after doing this we can uh, these groups will tighten up a little bit better here round. Get down take a look. Here are the three groups. And the Winchester power points. Next step, the 90 grain ELDX Precision Hunter. All right, Let's see what we can do here. Yeah, that one's a little off there, but still good. Shoot the second group here. Get this 
third group shot here. It's about 85, 86 degrees today. You know, not super hot. We've got quite a bit of wind. I mean, you would think that, you know, it would help cool this barrel down, but this lighter weight profile, it, uh, it gets hot pretty fast, so. Let's shoot this third group. That group looked pretty good. Like those uh, the LDX has settled in nicely. Let's go down and take a look. So here's the groups for the 90 grainers. There's the first one, not looking real great, but the second one starts coming around, and then you get into that third group. Once that fouled up nice there, I think those bullets will actually shoot pretty good through that gun. So next bullet up the bat, the Federal loaded with the Burger 95 grain hybrid hunter. There's some uh, clouds moving in on us here. The west starting to look pretty gray over there. We better hurry up and get these shot before we get rained on. First group, hybrid hunter. Get these on paper here before it rains quick. Not super promising. Let's send another group here. Let's do this second group of these. That group looks a little better. Let's put the third one on paper. See if it settles in just a little bit better. Last shot of the group here. Yep, that one don't look too bad. It looks like they settled in pretty good. Let's go down and take a look. All right, the burger groups. First one, looking kind of wide. Got two of them to land together there. Getting into the second group, definitely settled in a little more. Getting into the third group, that one definitely settled in a little bit more, so... That round also has some pretty good potential. Next up, Battle of the 75 Green V-Maxes. Hurry up and get a few of these on paper. Before this rain shows up, it's right behind us. Yeah, we're cooled down now. group. Load up group number two. All right. Load up group number three here. Four rounds. 
last one didn't look too bad. Let's see if this one can be better. There's our first group. Second group got a little bit better. And then in my haste, I didn't shoot that one. For some reason I shot that one, and I know this last one I pulled that a little bit. It should probably be right in here instead. But it does show potential for being good. Alright, now let's do the Federal with the V-Maxes. Yeah, barrel's cooled down enough. We'll cool down real fast if it starts raining on us here in a second. Wind just started coming out of another direction. There's some lightning. We better shoot this group here and be done, maybe. That was not real great. So let's do a quick little recap on here of our ammunition, the accuracy that we got out of them. Those four, a little over an inch. Same thing with those four. These here kind of started to shrink up a little bit on that 85 grain TSX. Let's go to the 100 grainers. The first one really was probably one of the better ones. Those didn't shoot real well out of there. I mean, they're good enough to you know hit minute of deer at 100 yards, maybe two. Next, we had the Hornaday. First one starts following it up a little bit, gets a little better, and then really sinks in. I would bet if we keep shooting that one that uh, we'd probably get even better groups out of that. Moving into the burgers, kind of the same thing happened. First one on that clean barrel, had two of them that touched out of it, but following in, shrinking up, coming to the last one, getting just under sub MOA. I think that'd be another bullet, that 95 Hybrid Hunter. Probably do a little hand loading with that, see what we can do maybe later. Last but not least, we have the Federal loaded with the 75 grain Hornady VMAX. It was starting to rain here, and unfortunately the camera that I'm shooting this with is not waterproof. So, in an essence to not fry this Sony camera, we went ahead and just shot this one group here and uh, called it quits. But we know from this one right here that that 75 VMAX has the potential, if we reload it, that we're probably going to get good results out of it. So now my overall impression of this rifle. For something that's uh, sold between 450 and 500 bucks, I'll say it's not a bad little gun. Uh, accuracy is what you would assume from something being in that price range. Overall, I mean... Things super lightweight, easy to carry. I mean, it'll be nice for coyote hunting stuff like that. I mean, my my son, you know, being as young as he is, you know, he can easily carry it back and forth from the house to the shooting bench. So I think overall, 
those parts of it are pretty nice. The bolt, as we shoot it, it's getting a little bit smoother. Um, that's kind of nice. We didn't really have any feeding issues, I think, overall. I think it had one round hang up, and I think it was the top one. I didn't have it pushed all the way forward, or all the way to the back in the mag. It was pushed forward and kind of hung up a little bit. I just kind of rerun the bolt, went right in. So feeding on this gun, this one doesn't have any issues with it, so that's pretty nice. Um, I did take the scope off. It's got a super short eye relief to it. Um, I didn't really like it. We're probably going to put that on on one of my kids' 22s or something. Get rid of that. I don't know what I'm going to put on it, but uh, like I said earlier, this I took off of another off of another rifle, so that's got to go back on there. But I think that function-wise, it's doing pretty good. We do need to turn the trigger down just a little bit. It is a bit heavy for accuracy right now, and I think the biggest hindrance of it is in the stock itself, and I'll show you that here in just one second. I think that some of the groups that we shot on paper could probably be better if we went ahead and changed this, this stock out on here. Another thing that I think would be an easy upgrade would be to change out this bolt handle. It's pretty short. And this is a cock on open action. So right there you can see it pulls back the rest of that firing pin. Now there's no ammo in there, no magazine. We'll dry fire this. How much force it takes. I mean you can pick the rifle up by how much force it takes to open that action. That compromises your ability to keep your face on the gun and stay on target looking through the scope on there because of how hard that is. If we had a little bit longer one we might be able to get a little bit better leverage especially my son you know being smaller getting that thing to open up for him he has a real hard time trying to make that work for him. One of the biggest things about this stock is in the grip of it. While for carrying, you know, it's a it's a great grip angle for carrying. That part's very ergonomic. But when it comes to actually shooting it, you want a 90 degree trigger pull on here. Well, this grip is clear back here. I mean, I'm six foot tall, have what I would call regular sized hands. They're not small by any means. Normally, when you want to pull back on your stock and pull it back into you, right in here on your hand, pull back in here, and right here, my finger is pretty stretched. It needs to be about right here. We're clear back here. So this needs to be a little bit further forward, or the trigger needs to be a little further back. Either one, the ergonomics of it just don't quite work out, especially for my kid. He has to grab clear up in here to be able to grab that trigger and uh, get his finger on there. The other thing I want to show you on here is right in here, this barrel channel. This stock is very, very flexible. If I hold on to the, to the bipod here and tweak the back end, I can flex that thing pretty quickly and make that barrel touch the sides of this of the barrel channel in that stock. Same thing with the back end here. The other thing I'll show you here, set the butt stock up here on a block of wood so that it's good and solid there. And I'll show you, so that way it's, it's not just showing you the flex of the butt pad, but right here, if I put my finger in here, and just push down on that with one finger, you can see the bolt, and right here, dipping. Watch that flex. And that's just one finger pushing on there. In my opinion, I mean, this stock is the weakest link. I mean, you can probably see it flex with me just doing that a little bit on here. You know, it's getting movement, 
between those action screws and I think when I was pulling back into me just a little bit if I wasn't super consistent I could just feel the stock flex I don't have this scope set quite right for me and I was having to pull back and tip a little bit off square more than I normally did but I just felt like every time you pull the trigger you can just feel that flex in it if I wasn't super consistent that it would pitch a shot right or left so I think if we get a chassis or a Boyd's laminate stock something just get rid of this stock I mean I need something to shorten this thing up this is my kids rifle after all so it would definitely help him to take some length of pull out of this thing if you got any comments on it leave them down below like share I'm sure this isn't going to be the last uh, last video we make of this. We'll probably get into some reloading on it. So we'll catch you on the next one.